All right, so greetings from Pennsylvania once again. And in this video, we're gonna be heading down into Carlisle at the what's known as the Carlisle Indian Boarding School Cemetery that's down there. And I will warn you, the topic of this video is not the most pleasant one, the history associated with this site. But uh, history, whether positive or more negative, is still important. As the saying goes, those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So you can learn from even history that isn't so positive. I'll talk more about that a little bit as well. I'm currently not in Carlisle, I'm north of Carlisle. I'm doing one of my Appalachian trail hikes. I'm actually hiking back to the Jeep. But uh, I'm gonna do the intro here just cause it's quiet out here. Where the cemetery is at, it's probably gonna be a little bit more noisier, some highways and stuff. So I thought I'd just do the intro out here. So like I said, the general topic of this video is not the most pleasant one. Uh, this school was formed in 1879. And if you know anything about American history in the late 1800s and the relationship that the U.S. government had with the Native American tribes out west, you know it wasn't the uh, highlight, necessarily the highlight of American history. So a lot of things that went on. Um, a lot of times we don't like to talk about those things you know, no, no matter what country you're from, sometimes, you know, our own, our countries, our own personal patriotism or nationalism, nationalism gets in the way of us um, learning about the, the not so bright parts of our history in our countries. And that's pretty much a shame because you should learn, you can learn from the not so positive aspects as well. So you don't, like I said, so you don't repeat them. So like I said, the school was built in 1879, and the purpose of this school was to bring Native American children, usually from tribes out in Oklahoma, places like that, and to, to basically to assimilate or integrate them into typical American society. There were people in the government at that time that thought the only way that the Native Americans would survive as a people was to you know, assimilate their culture into the American culture, and that was the purpose Unfortunately, these schools, they would bring these children to these schools, usually not, you know, under their own will sometimes, I don't think. And, you know, they would strip them of their culture. They weren't allowed to wear their native clothing. They couldn't use their native language. Um, they changed their names to more English names and all kinds of stuff like that. Basically, you know, strip them of their identity and their culture to, you know, like I said, assimilate them into... A typical American. And it actually, when I was reading about it, it's actually pretty sad, actually. That, uh, and this is not, stuff like this doesn't just happen in, in America. If you're familiar with world history, this is, yeah, typical of around the world trying to, when you subdue another culture, trying to assimilate it into your own by banning native customs and languages and stuff. So that was going on at this school. And I think some of the some of the children that were brought over belonged to some of the chiefs from those tribes for the purpose almost like these kids were being held hostage and it kept the chiefs you know under control so they wouldn't rebel against the government because the government had their kids yeah it's pretty pretty awful stuff actually so like i said it's not the most pleasant topic but uh, there's 186 children still buried at this cemetery uh at the school, it was always the most pleasant conditions, a lot of disease, things like that, so many of them died as well. All right, at this point, I'm going to quit yapping. I'm almost back to the parking lot, and then uh, where I parked, and then from there, we're going to head down into Carlisle, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to access this location. It is located on, you know, in the Carlisle Army Barracks, U.S. Army, so hopefully, we can get there. I know sometimes the area is gated off. If we can't get in there, then this whole video is going to get scratched. So. so hopefully I will see you there. All right, so we did make it here. They do have a check-in point across the road that you have to go through, and you do need a, a pass to get in here. But they were very uh, gracious at the, uh, is it called the gate, the check-in spot there. I didn't really know if I needed a pass to get in here or not, but they... They got one for me, just a temporary pass, so you might 
if you do plan on coming here, you might want to check into that in advance, getting a pass to come on. Because this is the site of the U.S. Army War College, so not just anybody's allowed just to drive on here. Well, for obvious reasons, security reasons. So anyway, let's go on down and check out the cemetery. I got some more to say. And there is also a, a, a notable person um, went to school here. Uh, a couple days ago, me and my friend John, we filmed up at Jim Thorpe. We talked about who the town is named after, Native American athlete. And he actually attended this school. And that's what reminded me of this place, because I saw notes about that at his monument in Jim Thorpe there. So he, he attended school here, actually. Jim Thorpe. And there's a road here named after him as well. Anyway, I'll quit yapping and uh, let's take a look at this cemetery. And it's not as busy as I thought it would be here, but there's there's a highway there. I thought it would be a little bit noisier here. And here they have a little plaque for it. The Indian Cemetery. Buried here are the Indians who died while attending the Carlisle Indian School, 1879 to 1918. The original Indian Cemetery was located to the rear of the Grand Saint of Indian Field. In 1931, the graves were transferred to this site. Okay, I didn't know about that. I thought this was the original site, but they are moved here. All right, let's check this place out. Yes, I believe, like I said, 186 of them are buried here. Let's just take a look at some of them. We're not going to be able to look at every single grave. But you can see how the, their names were made more English. So they're, you know, Luke Phillips, that's not a Native American style name. It has a tribe that they're from too, the Nez Pierce, 1888. Francis Bones, Comanche. So it's kind of cool that they tell you what Try. Even some girls came here. There's Margaret, Yates, Apache. Well, here's one. Some of them do retain a little bit of their Native American heritage. Here's Percy White Bear, Cheyenne. Whole rows of them here, though. And if I remember correctly, the U.S. Army has been trying to contact relatives of some of them to have their bodies returned you know back to their native tribes and some have been returned and here's a larger monument thomas marshall 1878 to 1899 i'm not sure who this is but there's a lot of stuff sitting here for him A lot of people here though. Frederick, you see even that one doesn't sound very English. I'm going to mispronounce it, but Skasoja, the Apache, sorry, I probably butchered that. Lena Carr, Pueblo, Edward Hensley, Winnebalu. Well, here's an unknown one. There's one up here that has a whole lot more. Oh, this one I see in World War, World War II. Clarence Franklin Barr, U.S. Army, World War II. Some were just infants. So I think people were buried here at a later date as well, because this says 1955. So maybe relatives of the people that attended here are buried here as well. And this row here just has a ton of unknowns lying all the way up here. I'm not really sure who they were. Even as I'm sitting here amongst these graves, you know, I'm reminded of the unpleasant circumstances of this cemetery and what happened to these children but you have to remember even out of dark situations and unpleasant times good things can arise and what happened here is 
in a way, this was a, an effort to stamp out you know, Native American culture. But in essence, it didn't do that. It did the opposite of that. Because sometimes when, sometimes when you tend to try to stamp out a culture, all you do is reinvigorate it. Sometimes um, when an enemy is trying to destroy like a certain culture or civilization, the people rally together to preserve their people and they, they win. <laughs> but in this case, what happened was um, this effort to assimilate or to, to, I guess, in a way, eradicate Native American culture worked against the U.S. government because although these stu these children were torn away from their homes and things like that, the U.S. government gave them the tools, in an essence, to end up preserving their culture even more because you know they learned English and they got an education that gave them, I guess, say the education and the tools to, uh, in a way, fight back in the future because a lot of these children did become, as adults, they became activists you know, with the purpose of preserving the culture that they themselves had lost. So sometimes efforts that don't have the greatest circumstances actually work against the people who, you know, try to stamp out certain cultures in the end anyway. So that's kind of interesting. So a lot of these, some of these people, or the descendants of some of these people, or the, or the people that attended here, I should say, some of them did become activists and actually helped preserve Native American culture. I do find it interesting that a lot of them have, you know, their English names as well as they retain some of their Native American names like we saw earlier. But here is Samuel Flying Horse. Someone has a horse sculpture down there. Missing its head though. There's so many here. I think one of my favorite parts is seeing all the tribes that it represented. Apache, names that you read about in the history books. There's Crow, Sashoni, Seneca. Wow, never heard of this one. Not sure I'm going to try to pronounce that. Some don't have a tribe. This one doesn't. It just says Peter Ho, How, Alaskan. Arapaho. So just so many people represented here. So many tribes as well. Because people leave the the money up here and different things. Okay, this one's interesting. This one was named Abe Lincoln, son of Antelope Cheyenne. Son of Antelope, and he was his tribe was probably Cheyenne. Oh, so they named someone after Abe Lincoln. Well, they they gave him his English name as Abe Lincoln. Oh, check this out. Here's Fred. Uh, Sax and Fox. That's the tribe that Jim Thorpe was from. Over here's Chippewa. Delia Williams. Rebecca Little Wolf. This is actually really interesting. I mean, the history is kind of sad, but it's just, uh, I don't know, just very intriguing. Not something you see every day, especially in Pennsylvania. You know, if I remember correctly, this was the only Indian boarding school that was in the East. There were other schools like this, but most of them, I think, were out in that area, in the Midwest. Like I said, I think this is the only one that was in the East. And this was the first one, I believe. Others are modeled after this one. Like I said, sad history, but it's still intriguing, and you can learn from it as well. As I say, you know, it is what it is. It happened. You can't change. You can't change history. You can't change what happened. I know these days people are trying to. It seems like trying to erase history. I don't think that's the right action, though. I think, you know, ugly stuff has happened in the past. Instead of erasing it, you know, we can learn from it. Learn from history. It's just so many familiar Native American tribes. Apache, there's one. Oneida, 
Frank Green. Saw one up here that I recognized. This the Sue Friend. Well, here's an interesting name. It's the Friend Bear from the Sioux tribe. Yeah, I, I love the, I love so how some of them have a mixture of like an English and kind of their Native American name, Ada Foxcatcher in the Apache tribe. I mean, some of them they've kind of raced it all together. There's Alfred Jackson Seneca, and then others like this Eli. Hunlona. Still sounds rather Native American. Catawba tribe, Wade Aries. <laughs> All Almeida Heavy Hair. There's a name for you. That's interesting. There's another tribe I recognize. Pawnee, Martha Anton. You know, you, you read about these tribes in history books from being out west and stuff, and but here they're represented in Pennsylvania. Not under the best circumstances, but so fascinating history. As I'm looking at some of these, I would have liked to have met some of them. Here's Lucy Pretty Eagle. I kind of wonder if she was pretty, you know? That's an interesting name, though. I could spend a long time just looking at all of these names. Each one of these people had a story. Have a, had a family that got left behind back out west. Here's see if we have Dennis, son of Blue Tomahawk in the Sioux. Ernest Knoxoff, son of Chief White Thunder. These names are just fascinating. You know, they have like, like there's just a little bit of history on each one. All right. I'm enjoying this cemetery a lot more than I thought I would. There's another interesting one, Titus Deerhead. Here's one just called Young Eagle. It's kind of interesting how he retained his Native American name, it looks like. Well, I'm not even going to try to say this one. Olita. Yep. And some of their names have been, you know, like there's George Harrison, completely Engl Anglicized, I guess you could say. So to be honest, I wasn't so sure what I would think of this cemetery as I was driving here. I was, I was hoping it would be something interesting, but sometimes you never know. But I find this to be really fascinating here. I'm really enjoying walking around, just reading the names, where they're from. You know, sometimes it says who their parents were. Like I already said it several times, but I love the mixture that some of them have, like the English and their Native American name. I know it's the story here is kind of sad. It's not the greatest, most uplifting piece of American history, and it's not well known either. I didn't really know a whole lot about this place. They don't really talk about in textbooks because like I said sometimes you know our own uh, sometimes the country you're from like I said patriotism and the nationalism doesn't we don't like to talk about or to teach the not so unpleasant things about our past but I think it's good to do so because you learn you learn about the past you learn about the mistakes that not just you made but yet your country made and you learn from them to not repeat them because when you don't teach the mistakes people don't learn but yeah, if you get the chance to visit this spot, like I said, it is on the property of the U.S. Army War College, Carlisle Barracks, and you do need you do need you do need a uh, a pass to come visit here. They gave me a temporary one. I wasn't sure if I needed one or not, but they were very helpful at the gate. Maybe you should, I think it's a visitor center. You should probably stop at first, but I just pulled up to the gate and asked if I could come visit. And uh, anyway, they 
help me out with that. So cool people here. All right, yeah, definitely come visit. I might, I might walk around just a little bit more, and then we'll head back up to G. Naomi's waiting for us up there. All right. Very, just fascinating little spot here. So I really enjoyed making this video. I enjoyed reading up on the history, and that cemetery was was really, like I said, intriguing. Just yeah, it's kind of kind of unique in this part of the world. And I'm not sure if the building that housed the boarding school is still surviving. It's somewhere here on the property, but anyway, I'm gonna head out. Uh, like I said, if you, it's an awesome place to visit, but you do got to get like a some kind of a pass, I guess, at the visitor center to come and check a place out. I mean, you can drive by it right along the highway, but you don't really get a good prolonged look at it that way. But awesome place. Not the greatest history, but like I said, history is there. We can learn from it. So anyway, thanks for coming along, and I'll see you around.